the moment she get those chills When the kings of the hills I was so full of pain again I don't know what it means to your chumps But the team like a blunt And we're coming back around uh, I got a story for you uh, It's not a happy one It's about uh, this guy I knew uh, he was he was sort of this badass friend of ours. His nickname was Blaze. He was like the first one of us to get laid, you know. Like uh, he could almost dunk a basketball when he was thirteen. Wow! Like, even though he was five four. Yeah, hops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mugsy, Bugsy, and hops. When he was eighteen, I was like seventeen, and a group of us went to this party for Saint Ignatius, you know, private school in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. So fancy, kind of upper fancy, class. Fancy, pretty much all white. Yeah. Right? But it was down in the peninsula. Oh, so it wasn't even in the it city. It wasn't in the city, right? So we're like not in our usual neighborhood. We take him down there and we say, hey, the one thing you play is you cannot steal anything. Because back then you were hitting licks. <laughs> uh, back then we were all, yeah, we were, yeah, we would take things that technically did not belong to us. <laughs> uh, and so uh, we're, at the, we're at this party and it's all good. There's free drinks. But you're the only African Americans at the party. Drugs. We're the only African Americans at the party. Mm -hmm. He's dark skinned, dreadlocked. And Intimidating to it, other people. Wait. He and this white girl they like go into the bathroom and have sex. What? Yeah. That fast? Yeah, you know, they're high. They just Whoa. go for it, right? Yeah. And we're, yeah, and we're, we're like, hey, where's Blaze? But when they come out, we're like, oh, okay. But then, like, a little while later, they go back in. Another round. Round two, round two right? Whoa. Ding, ding. When they're still in there, they're like knocking on, hey, you in there having sex with that black dude? And stuff like that. You know, not cool, really, right? He's bringing a lot of attention to himself. It's funny, we're laughing at it. Yeah, it's like on some jealousy or some hey, I, hate I, don't know, or I don't know what's going on with them. Could be a mixture of things, right? But but nothing really came of it. It was all right. And they came out. But then he, after a while, like, he's not there. We notice he's not there. And it turns out, we can find this out too, a while, but he had taken a laptop. Where the real authority lies. What? Yeah. So he had stolen something. The exact yeah. thing we told him not to do. <laughs> he had done. And so I, he thought it was a good night. He's like, I got some He's pussy. got free I everything. Got free everything, food, free life. Yeah, so he's Fucking out. Free laptop. <laughs> so he's out there. He thinks I'll jump on a bus and go home, but he's not in his neighborhood. He has no idea where he is. So he's wandering around lost. He, I get a call. Hey, hey, Larry, I'm lost. I'm like, dude, you're lost. So what? Take care of it. You know, I don't know. I can't come find you. So. Then, right about then, these people at the party go, oh, our mother's laptop got stolen. And they, they're like, oh, they put two and two together. They go, you guys in on this? And we're like, no, we're not in on it. We would have ran out if we were in on it. So nothing happened with us, but they called the police. So it turns out he's walking along some road, some frontage road, trying to walk all the way back to San Francisco. And whew, the cops pull up, bust him, find the laptop. He winds up in jail becomes really tragic. Something happened to him that night. They beat him and or gave him drugs or whatever they fucked him up. And so police brutality and he just and got something up. and then later he was kind of brain dead after that always. Like we could never really talk to him. He's not responsive. Yeah, they fucked him up for me. He was like that guy. <laughs> He's like the guy walking around us up here in the park. And uh, his twin brother's fine. I mean, you know, he's cool. But yeah, it's a, that's a sad story. Damn. Yeah. This is like early 2000s. Yeah. So he's all screwed up. And when his mom came and to get him out of jail and saw him in there, she was like screaming and crying, saying, that's not my baby. You know, he's, she could see right away he was gone. Damn. Okay. Yeah, I got a childhood story growing up in Richmond in the 60s, 70s. I had two friends, um, I had more friends, but two friends in my neighborhood, Greg and Kenny. Greg was like a block away, Kenny was like in between the block away. And Kenny was younger than us, me and Greg were around the same age. Mm -hmm. And Greg was actually a descendant, and he had like pictures to prove it, of Captain Morgan. Oh yeah, pirate. Yeah, so he was, you know, it was pretty interesting. And my mom, she had a bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. so there was a lot of yelling and stuff at my house. So I would always want to leave as a child. I just, I just need to get out of here. I need some peace of quiet. I don't care where I go. And the other two houses were dysfunctional too, but they were at least a little quieter than my house. You know? right. Right. And Greg's house, his dad was like a shady landlord who would like steal people's deposits and put rats and roaches in people's apartments. Slum landlord. So much so that his parents slept in different rooms. Oh yeah, but you know, it was, no love lost. Exactly. And Kenny's parents was a little similar, but his dad was abusive. His dad used to like kick Kenny in front of me, 
his mother was the first person I was afraid of because I guess she was trying to overcompensate from the pain that she was always like just overly energized, happy, like, ah, yeah, and she'd be like, I can't see what's on the knee, and it was just like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, and this is in the 60s, so it's kind of almost like the 50s, maybe, like yeah. the dynamic there. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was like back in the day kind of, you know, household, yeah. you know, relationship thing. And, you know, eventually, Kenny grew up to be a psychopath. He went to prison, like he would kill animals and stuff like that. It was probably so hard for you growing up black. That was hard for you growing up white in the 60s, dude. <laughs>